Welcome to WTIS 16 from Habarone in Botswana and I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio right now by Dr. Cosmas Zavazava who is the Chief of Department of Projects and Knowledge Management for ITU. Cosmas, thank you very much for being with us in the studio today. Thank you for inviting me. Now I'd like to start off by talking a little bit about the main challenges and barriers faced by those who are not yet participating in the information society. Perhaps you could talk a little bit about that. Absolutely. Uh, there are many factors that are inhibiting uptake of ICTs. Uh, one of them happens to be uh, lack of capacity on the part of uh, individual households to get the new gadgets and to embrace their cities. Second, uh, could be regulator as well, uh, that it does stifle uh, competition. And then thirdly, uh, maybe I would say affordability. People want to use ICTs and modern technologies, but they don't have the buying power, and that inhibits a literacy level uh, is also another factor because the lower the literacy level, uh, the less the individuals are able to use uh, high value uh, services. For example, financial inclusion or telemedicine or e-education or m-education. So that, that those are some of the factors that are uh, slowing down the process of creating a truly uh, global information society. And what policies and regulatory steps do you think that governments can take to drive investment, to foster uh, public-private partnerships, so as to expand ICT access to all their citizens, including those at the bottom of the pyramid? One, one of the factors is uh, an issue of sovereign risk. When you do sovereign risk analysis, you are trying to see whether the government will backtrack on its policies and the predict predictability of the environment. So a pure uh, pro-ICT uh, framework in terms of regulation has got to be predictable, it has to be fair, it has to be non-discriminatory and that's what the investor is looking for. Then at the same time the investors go where the money is, they want return on investment and behind them are uh, shareholders who are crying uh, to, to get their return and to get dividends in the end. So I think uh, basically it is important for the government to create an enabling environment starting with appropriate policies and then coming down to an appropriate legal framework and also to a good pro-ICT regulator framework and then capacity building becomes also a, a good issue. So the general uh, investment environment must be good and also I think there must be opportunities to expand the business. Now here, it's, we're pretty much looking at statistics. We're the, the launch of the, the MIS report here. I wanted to ask from you, how can data statistics help to understand and address the changes brought about by ICTs? I, I, I think statistics are the thing because if you can't measure it, it doesn't exist. So the most important thing is to be able to say, I am putting my finger to check the pulse. And you can do that by making sure that you have the figures uh, to big it up. So we take the national statistical offices and we take the regulator authority who rely on the operators to submit data and they have to validate it. But at the same time, there is a kind of data which is household based, which comes from the national statistical office. When they work together, we have better results. And it is important to do that because the government has to, fight to, to make sure that everybody is saved. And that's why you find the regulator, most of them have got a universal service fund to make sure that people can go to the rural communities where the return on investment for the private sector is not guaranteed, so they give a subsidy. But at the same time, when they are doing that, it is also important to make sure that the regulators play their role, the investors play their role, the users play their role. So I, 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 I think that is the key issue. And uh, statistics helps because it shows you a roadmap. It shows you where the investment opportunities are. It makes, it's a self-correcting mechanism. It has a feedback. So if I go and I assess and I look at the figures and I see that there is a gap, I have to make sure that my policy is refined. My regulatory framework is refined. Uh, the, 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 the other measures like capacity building and so forth are refined so that everything is in tune. Finally, a question uh, which uh, would be interesting uh, to, to hear the resp your response on. Should people be apprehensive about the impact of ICTs on their lives? Well, I think uh, some people use a very good example. A uh, table knife can be a murder weapon, right? <laughs> so I think everything people can be apprehensive of 
if a, a motor vehicle can hit you and kill you. So what I think is uh, there are great opportunities in ICTs, but naturally there is also the dark side of ICTs. This is why in ITU we make sure that we bring together all the elements of the jigsaw puzzle, for example, cybersecurity, so that we police the information highway. And by so doing, we make people less apprehensive. And uh, what we then say is that make a good use of the information society, but making sure that you safeguard yourselves from the ills of it. Uh, things like child pornography, things like money laundering, things like terrorism. There are many factors. Uh, I, I think governments are taking measures. When we go across the world, in the least developed countries even, you see that they have got a national ICT policy and they take into account and the legal framework, the legal pieces of legislation that they have are also addressing all those issues, including the issues of privacy. Because privacy invasion is a big thing. And then money laundering comes in and many other ills. So I think people need not to, to be apprehensive uh, but the legal framework is going to be very strong. If I give you an example of big data, uh, or when you go on the web and you are asked to read the agreement and it's 45 pages, and then uh, if you don't click, uh, there is a refusal of service, and that should not happen. So I think uh, there is no need to be apprehensive, but what is important is to be prepared and to embrace and to know how to manage the environment. Some great advice there. Thank you very much indeed. And thanks for being with us in the studio today. And we look forward to catching up with you again soon. Always a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. And thanks very much again for, for viewing. And uh, please check out our other videos on the ITU YouTube channel. Thank you.